Welcome back to MVM. Today we have a preview. This one is from Draw Lab. It is a two to five player game called Fired Up in which we are the audience cheering on these contestants trying to gain points from their combat. Yeah, even though these fighters are represented on the board by these awesome miniatures with arrows directing them where they're going to fight, we are not those fighters. We are indeed the audience. We are trying to be the most fired up. So there's going to be betting going on. There's going to be highlights that we're trying to score and try to manipulate the fighters a little bit before the actual battle happens in order to get those highlights to happen. So this is a prototype version that you see in front of you. Make sure you guys go to the Kickstarter page to see all the final components. All right, so to play the game, you're going to set up the board. The main board is represented by this five-sided board, and on it you're going to have a number of different fighters depending upon the number of players. We have a four-player game set up, and we have five fighters, all pointing to the player on their left. And that's important because these fighters are directed towards very specific fighters, and we as the audience are kind of cheering them on to have them move into different directions. Also, you're going to have this board off to the side. On this board, it's going to be tracking all the victory points in the game, as well as different things that you're going to bid on trying to get these contestants to do very specific things. Because in this game, we are trying to influence their actions through a variety of different things, typically using the dice within the game to have them do very specific actions. Yeah, there are a bunch of different dice in this game, but the ones Jeremy are, is alluding to are these influence dice. This is what we're going to roll on our turns and try to use those on the various fighters before the battle actually begins to sort of adjust their attack value, adjust their defense value increase or decrease their morale, which will have an impact on those other things as well. Each of these fighters is going to come with their own player board. On their player board, it's going to track their health as well as their defense and their uh, attack values. Each of them is also going to have a track over here in the upper right hand corner. This is the number of times that that particular fighter can be influenced by the group as a whole. So each fighter can only be influenced three times in a round before you can't influence them anymore. That's important for manipulating through the course of that combat. Also, they're going to have a morale track on the bottom right. This morale is going to go up or down. That will influence a lot of the cards that you can play during the game. And then also, each of them is going to have a speed number that determines their speed in combat, as well as a special ability that you can use for each of the different fighters. And each player is also going to start the game with four highlight cards. These are going to be a variety of things we'll talk about in a little bit more detail, but these are the sort of objectives that you want to make happen during the fights round to round. And also, these betting cards. You're going to get one for each fighter in the game. You're going to be using some actions during your turns to potentially place bets placing one of these guys out on a particular bet and hoping that you're right. So beginning with the start player, they're going to pick up an X number of dice equal to the number of fighters plus one. We have five fighters, meaning that each player is going to take six influence dice. The first player is going to roll all six of those, and he's going to make a decision. You have two rolls per turn. He can keep the dice that he has, or keep some of them aside and re-roll the rest of them. You are picking one of the icons located on the face of those dice, and one icon only, and then using those icons to influence one of the fighters. Yeah, and these dice have a variety of different things you can do to influence the fighters. We'll go over those very briefly right now. The first and the basic one is their attack and their defense. You're going to use this die to influence up the attack value or the defensive value of a particular fighter. Now, if you've rolled three of these, you could spend all three of those dice on one fighter to increase one of those values up a significant degree. Uh, the next dice is the directional dice of the fighter. You can manipulate any one of the fighter's direction. That means who he is targeting during that round. If, for instance, I wish to move this guy, I can turn him to any one of the vectors that I so wish, pointing to that new character that he wishes to attack. In fact, if I have multiple of these dice, I can expend the second one and lock that player in. Now remember, as we start to explain these actions to you, each player is only allowed to influence one particular fighter, and each fighter can only be influenced three times. So each time that you influence a fighter, you're going to be marketing on this board until it reaches zero. Then that fighter can't be manipulated anymore. Yeah, so for instance, if you have a highlight card that gets wants you to have this fighter targeting this fighter, Jeremy and I wa might not want to let that happen, so he's going to sort of push and pull with you until that happens. But like he said, there's only three chances to do so. The next die is the morale die. This is the thumbs up or thumbs down. You can use this however you want, but you're going to use it again on all one fighter. You're going to put this either above or below the neutral position on the morale track for that fighter, and then you're going to 
resolve that at the end of the round because other people may put thumbs up or thumbs down on that as well. Whichever has more or less is going to shift the morale of that fighter, which is also going to have an impact on its attack and defensive values for that battle. After that is the speed die. You're allowed to manipulate the speed of any one of these different fighters. At the start of the game, each of the fighters is going to be assigned one of the different tokens denoting their speed in combat. So you have the fastest all the way to the slowest. That is according to their speed on the upper right hand corner. Now, you want some fighters to attack before other fighters. That's where this die comes into play. And you're allowed to, for each speed die that you expend, exchange one from the lower person. So if you expend one and your fighter is in the fifth position, you can move down to the fourth and so forth by spending more of these different speed dies. Yeah, the last two die faces are pretty simple. This one uses the social tokens. Every player is going to have two social tokens in front of them like this. These are in the neutral position at the beginning. And when they're active, they're on the red side. When you use this, you can use this die face right away, or you can use it to sort of activate one of these to use it later. What these social tokens do is one of a couple things. One is if you fl flip one social token, you're able to place a bet. Just one bet on one of the different places during the round that you're in. The other thing you can do is flip two of these social tokens. When you do that, it allows you to multitask, which allows you to break the rules of the round and use another die from the reserve on any side you want, except for that social side or the double. The double is the last side of the die that I want to talk about. That's this two times. It effectively is used as a wild. Not purely, but it can be used with any other die face to sort of add another of that die face of all of the actions we've just discussed. So each player is going to use an X number of die each of their turns until all the dice are expended. So there may be rounds where a player spends four or five dice in one turn, and it could go past them several times until all the people have used their dice. Why do you want to use these dice? Because at the end of the round, the, effector, the fighter's effectively going to go into combat. And the reason why you're manipulating all these different stats is because you want your cards to trigger. Each player is going to choose two cards at the start of the round. The two cards that they pick are effectively the cards they're trying to get to fire off. Hence, fired up. They want to influence these to make these exciting for the crowd, so to speak. And these have a wide range of different things that they could score for. For instance, I'm looking at one here that says all attack dice are blocked. If I can get a situation where I put a lot of defense on one of the characters and then move somebody who has a lot of attack and I can get several of those blocks, I may score some points. A lot of these also have secondary abilities that give you more points for doing other kinds of combinations within that particular card. Yeah, exactly. This all comes down to that manipulation of the fighters beforehand. Here's just one more example. This one says the fighter with the lowest speed has locked onto the fighter with the highest stamina. So you can see right there, there's a lot of things that I might have to try to manipulate or at least look at the board and determine, okay, I've got to get this guy locked on, he's got to have the highest stamina, and so on. That's going to score you some points. Also, there are a few cards here that just kind of rely on the dice rolls. Yeah. Some of them might say, if this many of this icon is rolled in one roll, you can score this card. So there's a lot of chance, just like any sort of betting game like this. So to resolve all the different combats, you're going to do a speed check from one all the way to the final fighter. But before you do so, you have to look around the board to see if anyone's morale has gone up or down according to the dice that were placed on that fighter during that round. Yeah, for example, we'll look at Rexus here. If he had moved his defensive value up to say three or four in the influence phase, but someone had moved his, inf or his morale down, that's going to normalize and come back down to the highest value of that level. So any of that influence that you use to get his defense up just got lost because he's got low morale for that round. And to resolve combat, you're going to look at the attack value on the fighter and the defense value on the defender. And you're going to roll an X number of die according to whatever those values are. Each of the die is going to have a number of different icons on them. Those could be head, chest, fist, feet, and what you're doing is you're trying to roll as the attacker more of the defense of the same type. So say for instance I roll five feet and the defender only rolls one feet, four feet are going to go through, meaning four damage. There's also a way to do critical damage in the game. Each of the fighters has three health on them, which is different than their health track. This is like their pure life blood and their ability to stay alive. If you're able to do two of the same icons without any defense, you're going to take one damage in each of these areas. So for instance, coming back to these dice, if I rolled two heads, two feet, and two hands, that would be 
double damage on all of them, meaning that no matter how much damage he had, maybe he had 11 health, it's automatically going to kill them if he can't defend against that. Exactly. And remember, each time that each of these fighters does combat, anybody at the table that has cards that could trigger off that combat can use them. You are not in control of any one of these particular fighters. You're just using your cards to best influence the outcomes of those fights. Yeah, these highlight cards are going to trigger at various times, but it's fairly clear, like Jeremy just said, when they'll happen. But they are broken into three categories. Some of them will be used at the beginning of the battle phase, before it really even gets underway. Other ones will be used or triggered at some point during the fight, and then others you're going to have to wait to see what happens when the dust is settled and this fight is over to see if that card is triggered. Once all the combats happen in order, any of the dead fighters are removed from the board. Anyone that's pointing to an empty space, they're going to move to the next player that they could possibly point to in clockwise order. And then you're going to resolve any of the one of the bets that you've placed on the board according to whether or not those triggered as well. The game's going to happen like that over four rounds. And at the end of the game, you're going to tally up all the victory points that all the players have collected and see who the winner is. Yeah, and in fact, there's another way the game can end. If you don't get to four rounds and everyone but one fighter has been eliminated, that will also end the game, and you're just going to tally up the points and see who won that way. So that is Fired Up. It's from Draw Lab, a two to five player game. If you have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Make sure you guys go to the Kickstarter page to see all the final components, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye bye.